We welcome in a man that can't be stumped, but you oh, can try. Can. This man <laughs> went an incredible 64 and 16 in his sports TV trivia show and looked swaggy while doing it with a different jersey every episode. He has all the answers for any sports question you may want to ask him, and he's got a stare down that will have you quaking in your shoes. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Sultan of Sports Trivia, the Socrates of the Stat Sheet, the legend of leading off, Mr. Howie Schwab. How is it going, my friend? Well, thank you. That's a nice compliment, uh, everything you said. Uh, it's funny. I was going to put on a jersey, and I forgot to. I'm wearing a... Uh... South Carolina Gamecocks t-shirt just around the house, but uh, hey, it's all sports all the time. It's all, well, actually, that's not true. Uh, music, I'm into music, I'm into Young and the Restless, I'm into a lot of things, so, and my wife, so, that's good. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> important. Yeah, the last that's, one is special. That's very important, believe me. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. That isn't that the truth. Uh, well, I was going to ask you right before we got into anything. What is uh, what are some your interests that aren't sports related? But it sounds like you you listed off a good amount right there. Um, do you have a what's your favorite? Who's your favorite band or artist? Oh, I have a lot of favorite bands. Uh, I love Chicago. I enjoyed Neil Diamond. I enjoy Eric Clapton. I I mean I love music. I love Ambrosia. How's that for a group? Ooh, there Man. we go. The song yeah. holding on to yesterday. I mean, I, I, there's a seventies and eighties. I'm pretty good on naming that tune. I'm you surprised. must be the best trivia guy there ever is, because not only do you know sports, which you probably clean up at, you know music as well, which is like two of the major categories. I do okay. I mean, I, you know what? I'll be honest. Uh, trivia, as much as I enjoyed back in the day, uh, and the show was over ten years ago. <laughs> I don't worry about if I miss a question anymore. I don't worry to put pressure on myself. I mean, there are some people who, oh, you know everything. Do you know who this person is? I said, what was it, your cousin? It was my <laughs> uncle. Okay, <laughs> great. Like, I know who your uncle is. I mean, it's sometimes it's hysterical how people want to stump me so badly, and it's fine. I mean, I just, I had a good time. I had a good time with the show. I try to enjoy life, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just funny how there was a target on my back. I mean, I used to work basketball games for ESPN with Dick Vitale, and people would come to me right before the game, and it's like, I'm preparing info for the game. Uh, what college did this guy go to? And I'm like, okay, yeah, I remember him, blah, 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 and... I got them sometimes, sometimes I didn't. It's like, okay, whatever. It's like a blessing and a curse because I feel like people obviously want to see if they can stump you, but at the same time, you're like, dude, I have a life. I'm not here just to answer every single question everybody I, wants to ask me. You know, you know what? I try to have fun, and I try not to worry about it. Uh, it was funny. One time I was in Vegas, and someone said, oh, you never lost. I said, I, I, honest, I was... 64 and 16, which I did remember, uh, 80% exactly, which is kind of funny. But And the guy goes, you lost 16 times? I said, I did. I'm honest. And the guy was like, oh, my God. I'm like, one year ESPN, as a joke, for April Fool's Day, put on 14 or 15 of them in a row. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's a true story. And, I mean, I laughed about it, and they... They asked me to do intros to the games, and I actually remembered a few of the losses very clearly. Uh, one in particular I remember because I lost to a kid who went to Johns Hopkins who actually lived in West Hartford, Connecticut, not too far from me. No, I did not know him. No, there was nothing to it. Uh, I just had a day where we did four shows in a row. He was the fourth show. I was dead tired at the end and he, he killed me happens yeah. but uh yeah when espn did the 14 straight uh april fool's day schwab gets beat um, <laughs> okay i got beat what are you gonna do? <laughs> well there's a lot i want to get into obviously the show sure. but i want to start out first you were a graduate of st john's university you served as the editor-in-chief 
of college and pro football news weekly in the mid-1980s before you joined ESPN in 1987. Take me back to when you were growing up, getting that first job. What made you kind of just first want to get into the sports world? Because I don't think people maybe not know uh, how did the Schwab come to be. Well, first of all, I've always been a sports fan. Uh, my first football game, I was four years old. First baseball game, I was four years old. Uh, yes, I remember both of them, actually. First two games I went to, Mets, Cubs. The Mets lost one zip on a, a wild pitch. And the second was a Met-Dodger game where Willie Davis hit a home run that was like, oh, my God. But uh, I'm not surprised you remember that, clearly. Yeah, well... <laughs> One of my favorite early memories, I went to a Met game against the Phillies. Nolan Ryan pitched for the Mets before he became Nolan Ryan, Astros, Rangers, Angels, etc. And Nolan Ryan, first batter, gives up a hit. I turn to my dad, I go, there goes the no-hitter joking. That was the only hit he gave up that day. <laughs> oh, my God. It was either Denny Doyle or Jim Hutto. I forgot which which one did it, but... And I actually mentioned that in the Did You Know book we wrote for ESPN. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I've always been a sports fan. Uh, I've loved sports. I've always known that's what I wanted to do. And I've been lucky and blessed enough to do it for 40 years. So I, I'm really lucky in that regard. I, I still work with Dick Vitale. I still work uh, with Clickstream a little bit. And uh, I'm just having fun. But to answer your question, I, I've always loved sports. And when you're lucky enough to do what you want to do, uh, that helps make your career easy, really. And you, I mean, you made it look easy. You get to ESPN 1995. You're the coordinating producer for ESPN. And you really kind of just worked your way up. Just beginning in 98, you served as the coordinating producer for ESPN Studio Production. So you had uh, you worked with programs such as Sports Center outside the lines, and you also served as a resident couch potato on ESPN's first take. I think before people realized the first take what it is now, um, on which you discussed yeah. the top sports television programming each weekend, and then you evaluated the TV lineups of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on a one to five bags of chips rating system. Can you take I have me through that? Chips every week, <laughs> every week I'd sit there and eat potato chips and talk about games. <laughs> and Dana Jacobson, who was on the show, and Jay Crawford, who was on the show, were laughing hysterically, going, you are having so much fun. I said, you're darn right I am. It's great. <laughs> we just sat there, and and some people, it, it was funny. A couple of people were like, wait a second, you didn't give us five bags of chips. What's wrong? Our game's going to be great. Uh, it, was, it was pretty funny, but... Uh, you know, it's funny. I was involved in shows that early on were not as big as they became. Uh, first take, when it was cold pizza even. I even went first down. First and ten. First, yep. yep. Uh, I was on, uh, people don't remember this, but I was on the fantasy show with mm -hmm. Matthew Barry, with Stefania Bell, and with... Uh, with uh oh god who's um oh I'm, dan now uh, field yates is there i know now too no, I don't no, think he was... no, no this is way before that it was I, uh dan you know patrick what? no 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 it was um oh my god the running back for the steelers why Jerome I... bettis no 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 i'm oh my god this, this is my good chance to to this willie is parker dumb me yeah i know he had cancer too um, James Conner. No, 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 no. James Conner's new. This, this is how long ago it is. It's before everyone's time. But anyway, bottom line is this. I was on with Matthew Barry and Stefania and that group. And uh, we had a lot of fun first year. And then they dumped the show, said, oh, it's never going to work. Uh, okay. The next thing you know, about a year later, they come back with it. And I'm not on it, but... I used to be on I was on a, the original bearing of it, and people forget that, but that's okay. We won't forget. Uh, and, was it, it wasn't uh, Bob Ferguson, was it? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. So, um, go ahead, Eric. Schwab, you've been researching and, and obviously watching sports for years, and you've kind of seen the evolution from reading the paper to books to the internet and now social media. Is there a preferred method for how you do your research and 
Do you think it's easier to learn now than it was when you were growing up? Much easier. Much easier because of the internet. Uh, when I first started at ESPN and we started the research department, uh, it was so different because, for example, college basketball, you, you didn't have the stats delivered to you on the internet. You had to keep box scores. You had to use a thing called fax back, which is so out of date now. Uh, today, it's night and day different. Uh, it's so easy now to get updated stats and games. And now computer systems are set up. You see the bottom line where you see the scores updated. That, that's basically all attached through, uh, through the schools. And, and the communications are, are so different. It's so much easier now than 20, 30 years ago. I mean, when I first started ESPN, it was a lot different. But that, that's what we loved. We loved getting information. We loved digging up stats. We loved uh, giving opinions. Uh, and, and the people at ESPN were so great to work with. And that, that's the biggest thing about ESPN back in the day. Mm -hmm. When you had the Vitals, the Bermans, uh, the Dan Patricks, uh, the Stuart Scotts, etc. Tom Mees going way back. I mean, there's just so many good people. And we all enjoyed what we did. I mean, it was all a passion. I mean, when I first started ESPN, there were days I'd go in on my day off to either cut highlights because they didn't have enough people or... Actually, I'll give you one of my favorite ESPN stories. Iowa played Hawaii in football. Iowa was a top 10 team. The game was at Hawaii, and ESPN said, oh, we're, we're, we're not bothering uh, cutting a highlight the next morning for that. Uh, we don't have enough people. It's too late. And so myself and five other people said, we're going to sit there and watch the game, and then we'll cut the highlight because Hawaii may upset them. And sure enough, they did. Jason Elam, you may remember. Mm -hmm. the yep. He kicked the winning field goal. Hawaii won the game. Bob Wagner celebrated. Iowa, coached by Hayden Fry, upset. Uh, I think it was 2017. Bottom line is, we then sat with a, an editor and cut a highlight. So they had a 45-second highlight for Sports Center the next morning. And we celebrated by going to Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Shane Battier does when he wins a championship. Yeah. So, same thing. Well, I'll uh, tell you, Miles Simon, when Arizona upset Kentucky, went to Steak and Shake at 3 in the morning because I saw him there. <laughs> we're, Eric, we're doing celebrations all wrong. I think that's the way to go. I know. Um, but I, I want to get to the, the part where, obviously, I think a lot of people know you from, that's Stump the Schwab. Eric and, and my guilty pleasure – Every single time, whether it was coming home from school or we'd go and get pizza with our dad and we'd watch it at the, the sports bar it was at. And, I mean, you cleaned up, man. 64 and 16, we talked about 80% winning percentage. A couple of questions I want to ask you about that. First of all, how, how did it come about? Because they obviously had to go to you and probably ask you if you'd be interested. So how did it come about? And then kind of how did uh, it start taking shape once you agreed? Well, first of all, the way I found out about it uh, I got a phone call to go to Mark Shapiro's office, who was a senior vice president at ESPN, who's gone on to many, many great things. And he said, do you know why you're here? I said, uh, maybe something about Vital. I don't know, because I worked with Dick. And um, he said, nope, we're starting a new show. It's called Stump the Schwab. I said, really? Okay. Uh, it's going to be shot in New York and you're going to do trivia and see how you do it. I said, okay, that's fine. I, when I win, I lose, I lose. That's my attitude. And so, uh, little did I know that, uh, the show was set, whether I liked it or not. So if I said, no, I don't want to do it. Uh, they already had the thing started. They had a staff set up, people writing questions, um, and for the record, no, they never gave me the answers. You know how many people said, oh, you must, they must have given you the answers. I've read about that, yeah. I'm like, no. In fact, they had secure, security guys involved to make sure that 
no one gave me answers, that no one came in. Uh, it was hysterical. I mean, believe me, I, I lost enough times. I, it was funny, but bottom line is we had a great time doing the show. The first time I came down to New York to talk to them about the show, Michael Davies, who's the famous producer of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, said, uh, no, you look ready. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. The meeting I had took less than five minutes. I literally took two hours to get there for a five-minute meeting that said, oh, you'll be fine. And <laughs> that's, that's the microcosm of meetings in corporate America. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's how it happened. I literally came down there to the studio the first time, and they said, oh, we have people, fill-ins, to sit down and I said, no, 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 no. I want to get used to the set. I want to see what it's like. I want to see what it's like answering questions, how this is going to work. And so they had someone play Stuart because Stuart wasn't there that day. And uh, I got very comfortable. I got comfortable with the lighting. And I, I think that was a big factor for some people because some of the contestants did not adjust to the lighting. Did not adjust to a studio. Got nervous. I, I was fine. I just sat there and go, okay, so I do. We'll have fun. And I, I didn't find it too hard. The leading off game. Yeah, name the top 20 home run hitters. Okay. Uh, let's go with Hank Aaron. Go with blah, 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 blah. And so it, to me, it was fun. I, I just, I mean, there were a couple of times I screwed up and was like, oh, my God. One time I got really mad at myself. I think I punched the set, the <laughs> desk. Yeah. Oh, it was fun. I mean, like you said, 64 and 16, pretty good. And there were good people. A uh, couple of players I'm still friends with. And uh, Nabate Isles, who's a great jazz musician, who's won a Grammy, who's a great guy. He beat me, and we stayed friends. I mean... He's probably the closest of the and and guys who worked on guys and gals who worked on the show. I still talk to a lot of them. Uh, Tiffany Trick, who was, Trigg, who was our executive producer. Jill Katz, who went on to work uh, on at Comedy Central. Ari Yokult, who writes for a lot of different shows. Uh, he write, works with Strahan. He works with a lot of different people. Uh, Jamie Kaplan. There, there's a lot of people who were involved in that show, who still have great careers going on. Yeah, and I'm kind of interested. Do you remember, because you were talking about the contestants, do you remember there were two guys that beat you twice? Do you remember either of them? Uh, yeah, Joel Lepola Redwanski from Chicago. And then the other one beat me, and we had a, we had a little problem because he had a big mouth. Uh, though I'm past that now. Uh, I don't really <laughs> talk about him. Uh, though I made the mistake of being honest when ESPN did the ESPN book. And I said, this one guy, I, I did not like him. And uh, I, at the time, really didn't. On the set, he was obnoxious to people who worked on the show. And that bothered me. Uh, the fact that he beat me and then said I didn't shake his hand was total crap. Because I did shake his hand. And I did say, you beat me. And I will say this again. He beat me twice. The third time, I was so psyched up to play him. And then he got beaten in the first round of the final. Ah! <laughs> so I was like, bye. I deleted his name off my sheet here. So we don't need to acknowledge him. There is somebody I do want to acknowledge, though. Do you remember? You can acknowledge him. I have no problem with him being acknowledged except for the fact that he wrote an article in a Chicago paper uh, criticizing me for uh, being an egomaniac. I'm like, oh, really? Uh, sorry. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, and uh, how, how nasty I was on the show to him? No. Uh, what happened was you, you were pretty nasty to me. And... What am I going to do? Not take, not say something, or or not be like, 
this is a game. We're having fun. Uh, mm-hmm. But he he tried to get under. You know what? He tried to get under my skin, and it worked. So I I guess I give him credit. He beat me twice, but but I readily admit he beat. Me. See, I I I remember. And See, Joe Joe Lapole was a great guy. Joel Redwanski was a great guy. I, if he called me tomorrow, I'd love to talk to him. He was a so, great guy. So they might have stumped the schwa, but we will accept no slandering of the swab on this show. There you go. It's all good. Uh, At the end of the day, it's all good. I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, right by the ocean. Uh, life is good. My wife is beautiful. Everything is great. There you go. <laughs> you, you, your wife is lucky. You acknowledge her. I got to do more acknowledging of my fiance. This is what I'm learning from this interview. Um, happy, happy life. So I got to ask you, what sparked us wanting to reach out to you, actually? Because, again, we loved the show, but it wasn't one of the things at the top of our head recently. Uh, we right. had Scott Jenstadt on our uh, baseball show. And I was wondering if you remembered Scott at all. Uh, you know, it's funny. I read on Twitter some of the things that you guys are back and forth from people competing against him or something, and they wanted a rematch and uh, <laughs> saw some of this stuff. And I'm like, Scott Jernstad. You know, the, the funny thing is, I remember Jernstad, the name, because he worked in the NCAA, but that's not Scott Jernstad. But the name actually rang a bell, but uh, I'm not positive. He was one of the ones that beat you. I think the second time he was on, he got out in like the second round or something. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I, I had a feeling he beat me based on uh, based on reading stuff. But uh, good, good, it's good. Yeah, I mean, you both are great guys. So he was, I mean, he's again, he said I'm retired from trivia. He just had all good things about you when we uh, talked with him on our baseball show. Well, um, you know, funny, I, I haven't been doing too many trivia games and recently, Ari did a trivia thing where him, he set it up. It was me against uh, Nabate Isles against another guy who was on, uh, who was on um, the other ESPN show that Kenny Main hosted. And so the three of us went at it. And I was doing great. And then I missed a question by, it was a point value question. And so I ended up being second, and we did a leading off game where we had to decide how many how many we thought we'd get right. And the guy said, I, I think I can get 10 right. It was like Duke All-Americans in the 80s. And I'm like, okay, the later ones I know I'd get. But the 80s, I, I'm afraid I'm going to miss somebody. So, all right, try to get 10. He gets nine. The time's about to go out, and then he throws out Gene Banks and beats me. And I'm like, oh, my God. Why didn't I try to go get 10? Uh, but I think I, I probably would have missed one. So it was okay. He he was the better man. So be it. We I would be re- oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. We had fun. I mean, it was a good time. That's the main thing. And I think we raised some money for charity. I love doing stuff for charity. I just uh, was involved with Dick Vitale's gala, and he raised six point five million for cancer research. That's awesome. Was, I've gotten to meet some of the families involved and uh, who kids who've gone through cancer, and I've become friends with a couple of them. And uh, that's that stuff. I used to do a lot for Make a Wish in Connecticut, and yeah, just try to give back. Well, I'd be remiss if we bring up cancer for a second. Somebody that you were very close with on the show that you talked about, Stuart Scott, hosted the show, a legend gone far too soon. How was it working with him? And is there any funny, unique Stuart Scott stories that maybe some people haven't heard that uh, you know about that you'd share with our audience? Yes, sure. Stuart was a great guy. Uh, I was lucky enough to work with him and see his his daughters grow up right before our eyes. And, And now they're two grown-up, beautiful young women. Uh, Stuart was fun. We had a great time doing the show. Uh, one day, we were we did rehearsals basically to check lighting and sound. And, uh, know the they had different questions, obviously, but uh, Stuart. One day, they decided, and if you go back on uh, 
on the internet, you can find some of these. We did these little fun skits for the last show. Uh, one where I would go into a uh, deli and uh, cut meat and start answering questions. <laughs> and one where I was like a gymnast. Well, Stuart decided to imitate the gymnast. And he did like this thing. Oh, my God. I still remember it. He, he, he did like a somersault. And I'm like, wow. I couldn't do that in a million years when he did. He did like a running thing. And uh, no one taped it, unfortunately. If that was on tape, that would have been. Uh, very few people know about it. The people who were on the set knew about it. Uh, but it, it was amazing. It was amazing. And next time I will make sure my phone is shut off. <laughs> I thought it, it didn't was. happen on the show, did it? No, uh, <laughs> no. The well, actually, you you will see if you saw this, uh, and I have a clip of it. Maybe I'll send it to you guys. Um, they had a, uh, me making believe I was the gymnast uh, doing this, and they had a gymnast filling in, and they cut it together and. It was hysterical. Oh, that's awesome. But, uh, but Stuart was great. He, I miss him so much, and I still think about him all the time. And he was great beside Booyah. He was a smart guy who just was fun to be around and great to work with. So I want to be very respectful of your time, and uh, there were just the last couple things I wanted to ask you here. Um, Right now, I was reading that you're working on a new sports trivia app and that you're going to get a chance to compete against you for cash and prizes. Is that actually, is that happening or is that old news? <coughs> Pardon me. Um, that did happen. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not uh, doing as much at the moment, but Win Quick was a, a really fun thing to start with and we're still doing some other things with them, and so we'll see what happens. Right now, I'm working uh, literally starting tomorrow on a new book with Dick Vitale uh, on how basketball has changed college basketball the last 40 years with, from when he started to now, how it's, it's so different. Uh, we worked on a book last year called The Lost Season, which was on the season that ended without a tournament, what we thought would have happened. Uh, and that book is still available. Uh, I've enjoyed doing research and being involved with those projects, so that's been a lot of fun. Uh, I did a podcast this year with Dick Hoops Weiss on college basketball. It got a little traction, but people can still listen to the, some of those. We interviewed Scott Drew during the season. We interviewed... Jay Wright, we interviewed Tom Izzo. Uh, I thought we did a pretty good job. So, Schwab, I, what I'm taking away from this interview is that you are probably a bigger college basketball fan than it sounds like any of the other sports. Yes. And I think, and I think the Leitner shot is number one for everybody. But what is the best game that you've seen? Doesn't have to be a March Madness one besides that. Wow. I, I've seen a lot of great games. That's why I know I'm thinking one six best, overtime. One of the best games that comes right to mind. Villanova, UNC. Had the wrong result. And All right, let's hear it. it. Syracuse St. John's back in about 1979-80. Uh, went to the wire. Uh, St. John's was up. They missed a free throw. Syracuse came down. Controversial non-block charge call. And uh, Roosevelt Bowie and Louis Orr beat St. John's. Syracuse is number two in the country. St. John's was seven. It was in the afternoon on, on NBC, TVS. And uh, to this day, I'm still pissed that we lost <laughs> as a St. John's fan. But that was one of the incredible games. Um, uh, I, there are so many games. I mean... Uh, I think the Villanova North Carolina game in the NCAA tournament. That's what I was thinking. Chris Jenkins' shot. I was there for that. That was oh my pretty gosh. amazing. Very intense. Carolina, you know, hitting shots at the end 
and then Villanova making the, the winner. That was pretty emotional. That was a great game. I was lucky enough to be courtside with Vital for that one. Um, I mean, I could go back to games. Iona upsetting uh, Louisville at the Garden back in the 70s, or early 80s, rather. Uh, oh, there were so many. I mean, I've been very lucky because you know, the passion of the game, I love college basketball, and it's been a big part of my life, and I've been very lucky to be in some great games. So That's all. We're talking to Mr. Howie Schwab, the man of Stump the Schwab, extremely nice guy. Mr. Schwab, we'd like to get you out of here on this. It's what makes us oh, no, unique no, here. You know, uh, I, can, I can go a little longer if you want. I'm, I'm fine. Oh, I, I, okay. Well, we'll do a couple other questions. So I, I do have a rapid fire at the end. I'm curious to hear your answers on. Oh, my pleasure. Um, nice to be with you guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, so then one question I didn't get to that was interested. You're, you didn't get to do in when you did the, the games, obviously, for Stump the Schwab. You never participated in the second round. One, did you ever want to? And if so, what game would you have wanted to do? Because there were so many different second round games that you that you guys did. Uh, that wasn't my decision. That was the producer's decision. Uh, I would have played anything they wanted me to play. Um, wow, was there any one particular one I wanted to play? Not really. Uh, it was fun watching the competitors go at it and and trying to see who I thought was going to win. And a lot of times I was right, but there were times I was wrong. And it was surprising, but it was fine. And uh, I respected all my opponents. I respected uh, what they knew and didn't know. And there were times I made mistakes in the final game uh, where I gave, gave them questions I mean, I remember exactly Nabate Isles, for example. Nabate Isles was a boxing guy, and I didn't know that. So I figured he wouldn't get the boxing questions. He nails all three, and I go, boy, am I an idiot. I would have gotten all three of those. I love boxing, and it happens. I mean, that was half the fun. So there are a lot more stats in sports today, I think, kind of going along with the analytics uh, route that we're going. We see whiff percentage in baseball, true, true shooting percentage in basketball, sure. et cetera. Do you pay attention to that? Uh, not as much as some people do because, you know, when I was at ESPN, yeah, you had to know all these stats. You wanted to develop things. The big thing about those is you try to tell people why things happen. Uh, you want to give a reason that a guy is producing. Uh, to me, it's funny. I had an argument one day. Um, someone wrote, it doesn't matter what a, a, a pitcher, uh, you care about all these stats. We don't, don't really care about whether he wins or not. Pardon me. Uh, isn't the idea to win the game? Isn't that like the most important stat? Are you kidding me? Uh, Jacob DeRom's a great pitcher. Uh, he doesn't win as many games as he should because he doesn't get the run support. Fine. But the fact that he's not a 20-game winner, doesn't that matter a little bit? I, uh, I think sometimes... We over-dramatize and overthink things. Uh, to me, in college basketball, for example, uh, I care a lot about the three-point field goal percentage. I care about rebounding. I care about turnovers. I care about... Give me the stats that tell me why the game ended the way it did. And I think you're telling a story. And I think that's so important. And some people just overthink things and but uh, that's fine there are people who uh have their their feelings on statistics uh statistics are used to make your point may, complete your argument to me and, and some people understand that and some people disagree with me that's fine I think also a big reason, too, is you see the rise, in, and we're a fantasy sports podcast, but we see 
the, the rise of fantasy sports and how much it impacts things is people want to have you in fantasy baseball specifically sure. Eric brought up like whiff percentages. You're, you're looking at things like expected stats and you're looking at home run to fly ball rates and, and those type of things. And that matters so much now that ESPN has a separate broadcast for it now. Yeah. Uh, th- that's not, so you're not a fan of any of that. Uh, I think it has its place. I think mm-hmm. people, appreciate it. Uh, I don't worry about it. Uh, I have not been playing fantasy very much anymore since I got remarried. Uh, I played NFL for a year or two and then said, you know what? I don't want to sit here every Sunday and watch the NFL network or watch the feeds that pardon me, give you every stat imaginable. It's fine. Uh, I know fantasy is great. I love fantasy, but I don't make it as big a priority anymore in my life. So it's fine. Maybe uh, one day I'll be able to get you to join the one league you'll do, maybe our fantasy league. Maybe. Maybe if uh, if you like my rapid fire enough, I can convince you. I'll consider it. <laughs> I, Weird. I just won't go as crazy. Uh, there was a year I had six baseball teams in fantasy. And fantasy baseball, you have to be on top of every move. Mm-hmm. And, every, and now with the COVID, I'd go crazy. Because, like, I watch MLB Network, and I see all these guys put on the 10-day list, put on 10-day injury list. Now the Padres with seven guys with the COVID situation. Um, it, it's crazy. How are you going to make your roster moves every day with everything going on? I mean, I used to, every single day, go on the computer. Oh, is this guy playing? Is this guy not playing? I got to play him. No, I got to. Oh, my God. It was crazy. It drove me crazy at the end. So it sounds like you do March Madness pools more than you do fantasy baseball. Uh, I do a few. Uh, I just try to have fun. Uh, I, have not, I have not won in... A while. The last one I, well, I remember winning a TV uh, when Maryland won the national title. Oh, 2002. 2002. So that was a good year. But uh, I mean, this year I entered one, I finished in the middle of the pack. It was fine. That's what we'll get you for next year. We'll get you in our bracket pool. We had over a hundred people. That might be Eric, more. He does not care about your bracket pool. So, no? hey, I, hey, I, I'll throw my name. My we, name in. we we donate to charity, so he maybe he that maybe that'll entice him. There you go. Hey. All, right. All right. Well, we're gonna get the Schwab out of here on this. It's a little what makes us unique here. We do a triple play rapid fire. Some questions you may never have been asked before. Are you game? I'm ready. Let's do it. It's fun, right. guys. Thank you. Uh, number one, lose in the Schwab showdown or miss an answer on the first turn in leading off. Oh, losing the Schwab showdown. I, I hated that because that was it. That was that you win the game or lose the game on that. So um I mean there were times I missed questions early on, so be it. But losing in the Schwab showdown was tough and uh, a lot of times it was the other player give him credit. But uh the game itself was fun, so that's the bottom line. And it definitely, I could always see it looked very stressful when you'd get those right. And I would see that sigh of relief. I was like, "Oh, I'm I'm sweating oh, just I, watching." I remember one in particular. There was a question, and I sat there for about five minutes. And when you didn't know it took five minutes because they edited the time, and I was driving myself crazy. I'm going, "Oh God, oh!" I literally. I had to rack my brain, and finally I spit it out, and I, I was shocked that I got it. I loved when you would always say something wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, all right, next one. Pancakes, waffles, or French toast? Wow. Uh, probably French toast. Good yes. choice. Good choice. Um, my wife one day made pancakes. They were unbelievable. They were great. She's laughing now. Uh, <laughs> the la- of the three, the last time I had one of them, I think I'm pretty sure it was French toast at a restaurant for breakfast. 
I'm trying to remember, but uh, you know, uh, my answer is French toast. Final answer. I, I I knew you were a smart guy. Now that just confirms it. So that that's a perfect answer right there. Would you rather be the best in the world at one thing or be good at everything? I think I'd rather be good at everything. Um. Yeah, that's a tough question because if you're best at one thing, then people remember you uh, as being the best at, at that. If you're good, at, you're consistent and you're good at everything, then uh, it, it's pretty positive. So uh, I guess I'd answer good at everything. Okay, I like that. Other people may disagree, but that's okay. You have to give up one, chocolate or cheese. Which one is it? Oh, that's easy. Uh, I, I'm not a big cheese man, so uh, that that's easy. I'm learning from this interview. Me and the Schwab do not like cheese much, and we also are big French toast people, so maybe we were, we're long lost related. Too. Nope. <laughs> uh, would you rather talk to your past self or your future self? Oh, wow. Um... Probably past self, but, you know, it's interesting you ask that because future self, I just, I just go for, enjoy every day. Uh, and I'm lucky enough and blessed to be married to a wonderful woman and have a good life. And the most important thing in life is happy, not money, not stature, not anything, happiness. Because if you're not happy, that that's half the battle. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, today I didn't do that much. I, I watched a Rafael Nadal tennis match. I watched Serena Williams get upset in Italy. I was watching a baseball game. Uh, I did a little work towards this book we're starting. Uh, it was a good day. It was relaxing. I'll eat dinner later. I'll have fun. We'll watch TV. Whatever. Just have fun. Just enjoy life. I love that. And speaking of dinner, so the next one is food related. Do you cut your sandwiches down the middle or do you do it diagonal? I just eat them. <laughs> I was going to say, who cuts your sandwich? Who cuts sandwiches anymore? Uh, uh, you know, it's funny you say that because my wife has done that where she said, oh, you're going to eat too much, Eric. Let me cut it in half. Uh, <laughs> So what did no, that I, then? I, I guess my answer is I don't really know. I don't, I don't, I don't, cut. I'm trying to think, when was the last time I cut a sandwich? Let's see. Oh. <laughs> sure, you didn't think you'd be asked that today. Oh, I'm sure, that's okay. That's half the fun is answering. That's why I say my life's an open book. You want to ask me a question? <laughs> Go ahead. I'll answer it honestly and cutting a sandwich. Yeah, there you go. Uh, no, I honestly I don't remember the last time I did that. So, all right, we got the last three here: uh, Batman or Superman? If you have to pick one, Batman. Batman. I used to love watching Batman and Robin and all the the the, the Joker and all, all the different criminals and yeah. Growing up, I loved Batman. All right, next one's a little trickier. Would you rather fart every time you laugh or burp every time you cry? I'm going to get in trouble for being honest about this. Um, <laughs> if I fart, that could be a problem. <laughs> I clear a room. So. She, she might not be a happy wife anymore. Well, I try to be careful. I like that. Well said. Uh, last one. Beat Dick Vitale in a March Madness pool or in college basketball trivia? Uh, well, I know I'd beat him in trivia. Uh, March Madness pool, we, we have fun because we both do pools and um, they don't always publicize it. But uh, I, I, I like the idea of beating him in, in picks at the, final, at the NCAA tournament, but I'll tell you what, he's very good at what he does, so he often beats me, to be honest. So, If, if we asked Dick Vitale if, who would win in trivia between you and him, would he say you? I think so. 
Oh, I'm gonna, we're going to have to reach out to Dick and, and see if he agrees. We'll have but to. I'll tell you what, he does know what he, he knows a lot and he remembers a lot. So it would be a challenge. That's his niche. Yeah, right, well, I mean, he knows his stuff. He's, uh, he's great at that. So if we are able, I'll tell you what, if we're able to land Dick Vitale on a show, we will definitely a- ask you to come back on to go head to head just in a fun. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, well, Howie Schwab, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was an absolute Great blast. Great being with you guys. It was fun. I enjoyed it. And I'm glad the technical stuff worked. And all good. Well, we had fun. Be happy to do it again anytime. So Great thank being you so with much. you. Uh, is there anything you want to plug to our audience before you go? You talked about the book a little bit or anything else you want to talk about? Well, i tell you what. Uh, Last weekend, I was at the Dick Vitale Gala, where he's raising money for cancer research. And the V Foundation has done so much good work. And I know times are tough with COVID, times are tough with people with jobs and everything. But if there's any way people can donate, uh, go to dickvitale.com, and there's a link to... uh, to, to the Jimmy V Foundation through Dick and any donation helps because seeing these kids battling cancer, it's so tough. It's so emotional. And seeing seeing some of the families that I, I gotten to know, it's so good to see them doing well that these kids uh, like Enzo Grande and Joshua Fisher and Tatum Parker I mean, these are kids no one out there really knows unless they follow the gala. But seeing them growing up and healthier and doing well after many sur- chemos or surgeries or whatever, um, it's emotional. And, you know, cancer affects everybody. I lost my father in law uh, to cancer. And. Uh, so if anyone can donate, that's great. Uh, I understand if you can't. But we're all trying to beat this thing. And unfortunately, there's not enough money do- put in to finding cures. And that's why these things are important. Well, I'll tell you, it's Wednesday right now. This episode should be going out sometime Friday morning. And we're going to make sure when we tweet this uh, podcast out that we'll put a link for people to donate. Um, cool. so that way it'll make sure, hopefully we can get some people to donate. That would be great for a great cause. Yeah. Um, yeah. So most people plug their books or plug this or plug that I'm mm-hmm. plugging. So that's, that's perfect. And it's a great way to end an interview with such a great individual like yourself. Uh, thank you so much again for coming on and everybody listening, make sure you tune in again. We'll have plenty more episodes with nice guys like Mr. Howie Schwab. So, uh, stick with us. We'll, We'll get you through uh, some fun times with these tough times going on in this world. So we'll talk to you guys soon. My pleasure.